So uh, before I head to the, uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah. So before I head to the uh, data portal, as um, ICGC data portal, as Francis uh, mentioned earlier, uh, I'll give you a few slides, just uh, introduce you to how the data is processed, how the data is submitted to us uh, at DCC. So um, the screen's cut off a little bit, but uh, here it shows that the uh, opening of the submission. So basically it goes by uh, cycles. Every year there's a three to four uh, different submission uh, sessions. So uh, the member of the ICGC was submitting the data to the uh, DCC through a submission system. Uh, it started with um, few, uh, projects submitting the data and then being verified, uh, being validated uh, on the server side. And the errors reported, and then they were correcting the, uh, the errors. And then when the data is all good at high quality, you know, we signed off. And then there's a data processing, data annotation, uh, ETL uh, start. And I'll give you a little more detail about the uh, annotation we do. And then we close the data portal and we, uh, so, so, uh, we close the uh, submission and then release the data portal for the end user, for cancer researchers to browse through the uh, data portal, search data of their interest. So, um, so for, for the data coming to us, um, those are um, analyzed high-level high data, uh, simple somatic mutations, germline mutations, copy number mutations, structural variations, uh, DNA methylation, gene expression, protein expression, uh, microRNA, uh, exon junction. Uh, those are data analyzed through the raw data, either uh, primarily uh, sequencing data and then the raw data, uh, sequence raw data, they are submitted to EGA, as Francis mentioned earlier. And for TCGA, they're submitting to, uh, t uh, to CG Hub in the form of uh, FASTQ or BAM files. So this screenshot shows you uh, the uh, submission system open to the, uh, to the uh, submitters. And we have a status showing uh, how many files are valid or uh, invalid. And they get a submitter gets a report and then they can correct the, the errors and sign off. And this slide is the, the most uh, important slide that it connects to uh, the data I'm, I'm giving to you. Uh, in order to uh, add value to the data we have, uh, so basically we will provide uh, annotation. So data submitted are, are, are strict uh, um, analyzed data, primarily um, mutations. So we'll, we will merge all the mutations based on the, uh, the, the, uh, the genomic coordinates and the mutation types. And then we calculate the uh, frequency of, of each individual mutations across all the project, all, all the donors. And we can compute the uh, consequences of mutations. If mutation happen to um, affect uh, proteins, for example, amino acid changes, uh, so we annotate those for all the uh, transcripts, all the transcript forms of, uh, of all the genes. We could have um, uh, frame shifts, non sense uh, medi mediated decay, uh, all these uh, different kinds. And then there's another, uh, there's another group of uh, software. Uh, we, here we pick up uh, one software to predict mutation uh, functional impact. We categorize the high impact, low impact, uh, and unknown um, using um, software, the one actually developed in the UK group uh, here. Um, also, we add um, annotations about gene sets. Uh, those are a group of genes being annotated with uh, goal terms or pathways. So genes participating in different pathways. Um, also, there's a list of uh, genes are uh, known based on literature um, created by uh, Sanger Institute here uh, called Cancer Gene Census. Uh, right now, it's about uh, five, over 500 genes. So we annotate those uh, as well. And finally, uh, once this annotation is, is completed, and we run the ETL, uh, put all the integrate all the gene um, annotations and uh, and uh, mutation data together, and transform the index them in a highly in integrated um, uh, index, and then allow allow integrated search. So that's the um, that's the introduction. Um, so we have a few slides. Uh, Showing you uh, what, what, how the uh, how the data is how the website is organized, 
I'm not going through this because uh, it's all in your handout, so you will, you will be able to use that as a uh, reference. But now I'm gonna just jump into the demo. So uh, what I'm doing is just go through the size, uh, walk you through uh, different pages, and click follow different links. And then uh, at the end, I will try to demonstrate uh, some useful uh, use cases. Um, if I have time, I've finished all of them. Uh, if not, um, uh, we can we can exercise those uh, on your own because okay, so I cover most of the functionality there. So um, the home page is uh, dcc.icgc.org. So the home page um, gives you the access. Okay, I need to adjust the window a little bit. Thank you, Michelle. So the home page gives you an overview of data types we have. And uh, OK, so he's going to do a demo. Um, and rather than you clicking through to follow along be beside, just pay attention because I want you to be able to pull out from what his demonstration is. I want you to be able to pull out the organization between gene, project, mutation pages, etc. We are going to spend two and a half hours doing exercises, I think, in the afternoon. And so if you don't capture how the organ how it's organized, I you'll it'll be a bit muddled for you in the afternoon. So try and focus on, on how the, or, the portal is organized so that we can apply that in the, in the afternoon, okay? That's a great suggestion. Um, thank you, Michelle. So um, as you can see here, I give you an uh, overview of uh, cancer projects and um, the kinds of, um, of um, donors we have and the mutation we have, uh, mutated genes we have. And then there's a three, uh, four major functional area we have in the, in the portal. And there's a big search box here. You can, you can type in any keywords of your, of your interest. Usually gene can be a pathway name, um, can be anything you, you, can, you, can, you can think of. Um, so you can, you can get an interactive uh, response so to tell you uh, what, uh, what the data we have regarding those, uh, those keywords. So um, I'm going to step into the cancer project page. So this one lists all the, uh, the, the cancer projects participating in ICGC uh, consortium. Um, the page layout is a little different than usual because of the resolution, I think. It's better. So basically, this is a, a interface you will see very often in, in our data portal that uh, has two major uh, panels. The left one is we call it a faceted search. So these are facets. Um, basically, perform two functions. One is that you can uh, click on that, uh, you will filter down the uh, the result on the, on the right, right panel. The right panels are the result of your search criteria. So it's an interactive uh, uh, interface. So in this case, I'm going to click on, um, let's say, brain cancer. So as you can see, that uh, this, the right side are changed accordingly. So uh, what it was showing here that we have the brain tumor here, and we have three projects that are study the uh, brain t um, uh, tumor. And on, the, uh, on this graph, we show that uh, top 20 mutated genes with high functional impact. Again, this is based on the annotation we have earlier. And then this plot, it shows you, um, let me uh, reset it. So you can reset if, uh, the filter by uh, click on this icon here. Just uh, move away all the filtering. So this one shows you that uh, it is a, it's a mutation frequency summary. Um, so as you can see here, that each, each project is one row, uh, one column here. And then the dots, each dot is one uh, patient, one donor. As you can see that um, many, some projects spread out more, and some are, are tighter in terms of uh, distribution of, uh, of um, um, mutation per 
megabase uh, in the genome. So uh, not surprisingly that the higher frequency mutation are um, melanoma, skin cancer uh, because of the sun exposed, and also the, uh, the lung cancer, uh, the smoke. Uh, the, the low end are, are um, pediatric cancers, uh, brain tumor. Um, so those, those are indication of the um, uh, high level indication of the mutation frequency. In the detail page, we have uh, the, the listing of the audit project and then the counts of the data availability. So how many donors we have for each kind of a, a mutation. Um, let's just click on one of the project. We follow through that. Um, so this is a brain tumor from a TCGA project. Um, so we give you, uh, so this is what we call a project entity page. We have some other entity page, as uh, Michelle mentioned earlier, that mutation page, gene page, project page, donor page, we'll walk you through those pages. So for those entity page, we have uh, uh, multiple sections. Uh, the left side allow you to navigate through different sections. So the first one is a summary. So give you some, some basic uh, um, statistics of the, uh, the project, what kind of, uh, um, cancer types, how many donors we have, with different data data types, what donor we have, and uh, what kind of an, um, experiment data has been performed for these uh, for these patients, and we have links to uh, to raw data repositories, um, as mentioned earlier, that uh, EGA and uh, CG Hub are the primary ones. So for the for one. Um, project, we have uh, mutated genes. So this one shows you um, how, how uh, the genes are, are affected in this, in this, in this, uh, in this uh, project. So uh, you can also limit the uh, mutations by high consequences only, meaning that it's more of a uh, functionally uh, damaging to the, uh, to the, uh, to the um, protein. So once you click on this uh, high uh, impact mutation, you get a uh, uh, filtered um, counts as well. So all these are dynamic, interactive. So as you can see here, this, this one shows that you know um, P10 gene is the most affected uh, uh, genes in this in this uh, pro project, meaning that there, uh, there's a there's a most mutated donors. In this case, there's 75 out of uh, 268. Um, patient in, the, in, the, in this project. So as you can see that um, uh, 268 donors has simple somatic mutations. That's the total number of donors we have data for this uh, project. And out of that, you have 75 donors with this mutation, uh, on, on, with mutation on this gene, with high impact mutation on this gene. Uh, this table also tells you about Although it's about one particular project, it can also show information about other projects. So basically, it tells you, uh, besides this project, how, what happens to that gene in other projects. As you can see that the GBM is ranked number two here, and there's one project actually has higher frequency of mutation on this gene uh, compared to this, to this project. So um, similar idea is that uh, the, the frequent mutated uh, uh, mutations, so you have mutations listed or observed, observed in this project. Um, these are mutations that in this case, the top one is 12 donors there, and out of uh, 268 uh, total donors. And then for the mutations, we show you that uh, the genomic location, what are the uh, base changes, what are amino acid changes, uh, so in this case, uh, it shows a missense. Uh, the colors indicate the high impact or, or, or low impact, red or high impact. So each of the mutation has a red here because I selected the high impact here. Uh, the, la the last section is the uh, donor section. It lists all the donors with this uh, high impact mutation found in this project. So I'm going to click on the mutated genes. The second uh, highest one is the TP53. If you go, go to the um, gene page, again, um, is, is the uh, different sections. You have um, 
summary tell you what is this is and external uh, links to other databases and then um, cancer distribution once again you can select the high impact only uh, I found personally uh, found it useful to restrict the, uh, the uh, mutation type to be high impact because there's many um, passenger mutation that does not actually provide um, meaningful uh, information it's more of a, a noise um, so once you click on that, you, the, all the table, all the graphs are filtered out. So for genes, we, we also have the annotation uh, from pathways. So this genes in, is involved with at least all the pathways. And the goal terms apply to these genes. Um, this gene. And then cancer distribution, again, you just see the other way around. So I showed you one project and all the genes mutated in this project and ranked by frequency. Now this is the other way around that you have a you have a gene, and I want to compare the frequency among different uh, cancer projects. Yes? So, how do you attribute the high impact? How do you? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, I'll give you a little bit of detail. Uh, there's uh, many, many uh, uh, software uh, to do this. The one we choose is the, um, the um, uh, hidden Markov model. Um, I don't know, remember the full name, but it's developed in UK group. The idea is that then they use the uh, some uh, semi true data from literature and train the algorithm, and knowing that you know uh, some of the uh, some of the mutations uh, is known to be mutation uh, cancer causing, so mean, meaning that is more fun uh, consequential. Sniff app. Oh, it's no, it's fat H M M. Uh, there's there's many many there's Steve F and there's a there's a mutation assessor. We actually try to uh, try to do more and then combine the result. Um, so basically, it's a notation we pre calculate them and then assign the uh, the the category to the um, to the um, to the mutation. So these are actually more of, most of these are working on the um, sin, single nucleotide mutations. Um, they're not working on insertion and deletions. And, they, and also, they are not working on other non-translate, uh, non, um, the, the mutation does not affect the, uh, does not affect the uh, proteins. So for, for frame shift, for, for example, we actually are automatically assigned to high impact. So the, the algorithm is not, a, is not a perfect, but it's more of a provided, uh, added value there. So um, if you're more interested, we can, we can chat offline a little bit on, on that. Um, so um, again, uh, this these are listing the cancer project with uh, mutations uh, in this gene. As you can see, some of the project has a really high impact uh, frequency. So in this case, uh, this ovarian cancer has uh, 81 out of uh, 93 uh, donors, 87 uh, percent of mutations uh, on this gene. It's a, it's a very famous um, uh, cancer gene. So also we 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 uh, highlight we we have a diagram show that uh, the mutations um, and showing in a diagram show that uh, mut uh, protein domains uh, align with these mutations so that you can see that uh, this mutation occur on which protein domain and also the frequency is highlighted here as well so these lollipops are, are each one is uh, is one mutation so this one is the highest one. It has a uh, hundred and one donors has this mutation. So colors are a high impact. In this case, most of most of them are high impact because this is a well known uh, gene, uh, cancer gene. So down here we have a um, genome browser embedded as well. It gives you a little bit more detailed context of this mutation uh, uh, of this gene. And the axons and and trans, uh, trans uh, translated regions, and also the plus the uh, histogram of the mutation. Down here is that uh, the most mutate mutation uh, with highest mutate uh, with highest frequency listed within this gene. What are the mutations? Uh, as you can see, that this is the same uh, donor. We can see that in this plot that it has higher frequency. Uh, 101 uh, donors. So I'm going to click on this uh, mutation. You can see more detail of this mutation. Yes?
So, so uh, for sure, uh, all the annotations, uh, all the data is based on one, uh, the same uh, genome reference. In, the, in this case, AG19 is the one built earlier than the current one. Um, we do not have a plan right away to, to move to the new one, uh, but it, is, it should happen at some point. So all the mutation, all the uh, uh, annotation were based on the new build. Does that answer your question? Okay, so uh, mutation page, um, same way. Uh, we have uh, organized our page uh, in a consistent way for easier navigation. So uh, you can see we give a um, mutation uh, ID. So this ID is uh, stable across all the releases. Even though we change the uh, genome build in the future, we still have the same mutation. So this is our goal. So you can cite this mutation ID in your paper, in your, in, in, in wherever you, you link to us. So uh, again, uh, basic information about this mutation is categorized with a uh, high impact. And uh, here's the consequence table. It shows you um, uh, the mutation affect all the transcript uh, slice forms. Uh, in this case, there's uh, almost 20 slice forms. Um, it tells you about amino acid change and, uh, and the location of these changes. And uh, once again, a similar idea as the, uh, as the gene page, we list all the projects which has this uh, mutation observed and list sorted by frequency. So these this, this, uh, diagrams are similar to the gene page. So now um, all the all the cans you see a lot of cans in this page uh, in this in this portal. Each every can is actually all clickable. If you want to know say fifteen what this fifteen is, uh, what this eighty is, you can click it. And in this case, I'm gonna just click on this um, uh, one hundred and one donors. So any number, actually any number, you can click it. So when you click it, it gives you. A, another page uh, we call the advanced search page, which is the uh, most flexible, most advanced, you know, uh, uh, interface allow you to perform all kinds of uh, integrated uh, search for, for data of your interest. So in this case, I click on the 101 uh, in, in the uh, mutation page, you can see that, uh, so this shows you the, uh, the, the what, what this is a 110 uh, and one uh, donors there. So, so this, this, this page is similar to the page I showed you earlier that uh, it's just a little bit more than the, uh, the project list page. Um, you have left panel, now we have three tabs. Uh, the layout is oh, it's changing a little bit, so that's fine. Um, you have donors, genes, and mutation. Similarly, on the right side, you have a donor gene and mutation, and with the result. So the left panel, again, you, you tells you about, you know, we have 101 donors, and then you can see. So this, this facet is, is a great tool that it allows you to see um, how, how this, these uh, donors are break down into, um, into different kinds of types. For example, this 101 donors has 23 of them in uh, pancreas donor uh, patients. 18 of them are breast can uh, patients, uh, breast cancer patients, and uh, so how this is break down by projects as well. Same ideas: how many male, how many female. So these are actually interactive. You can you can actually apply uh, this filter. So for example, I'm interested in these donors, but I'm interested in only the donors has. Uh, has um, micro only sequencing data, so you click on that, all the the, the number will go down, and then you you say I only interest in breast cancer. This these conditions will combine together. You will narrow down the result. Now I have eighteen of the uh, donors. So this is the way that uh, the 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 um, it allows you to narrow down your your interest. And before actually you narrow down, it actually tells you about how many, um, for example, live. So if you click on this city, you have got two there. So it, it, it keep you uh, keep keep narrowing down and then guides you through um, the underlying data, the content of your filter. So um, so one feature I, I want to demo you is that uh, when you find a um, donors of your interest, you want to download the data. So here is a button here that you know, download don donor data. 
So you, when you click on that, these 18 donors of your interest, you can get on the data submitted to ICGC-DCC. So uh, this, this pop-up window allows you to choose further which data types you're interested in. For example, I'm interested in the clinical data, so I'm going to just select that, and then 18 of these uh, 18 donors for clinical data will be will be uh, downloaded. So it's a it's a it's a process running on the server side. I will let it run there, and uh, in in a minute or two, the file will be pro provided, and you can follow the link to download it. So meanwhile, I'm gonna um, try some more filter on the uh, advanced search page. So in this case, um, I'm gonna select uh, brain cancer. Uh, I'm interested in, let's say, um, so available data is um, micron A sequencing data. And uh, for genes, I want the genes to have um, reactant pathways. So genes with a reactant pathway only. So when you select these and all the pages, all the results were fresh, uh, refreshed, basically means that when you constrain genes, the, 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 the mutation will be, will be only the one that meet this criteria as well. So these are all interconnected. And for the mutation, I want to search for uh, fr uh, frame shift mutations. And then you, as you can see, this, this, this counts all going down when you apply additional filters. And you can examine the result in the, in the gene, in the donor, in the, in the uh, mutation. So one more feature here that uh, I want to highlight is that uh, when you uh, like, uh, identify these in interesting uh, genes and mutations, you can open them in the uh, uh, genome browser. Uh, the one we showed you was embedded in the um, um, project page, uh, gene page. Now it's the interactive one based on your search criteria. So these are the mutations you selected, and these are genes you selected. And you can go through these mutations and see the detail of the content of the genome, where they are and what the base mutations are, the, the detailed information about them in the, in the context of the genome browser. You can flip through genes and mutations, click on different uh, genes as well. Um, there, there's uh, more functionality here, I'm not going to uh, too much detail about that, but let's go back to advanced search page. So basically, there's a link here to give you a chance to go back to advanced search page. So I have uh, uh, 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, let's check the data is ready. Okay. So the data is ready. So basically, uh, you you can then download, uh, click on the link. You can download that and you can, you can save the file. So um, that's the advanced search page and genome browser, the interactive search uh, there. So even within the, um, the uh, advanced search page, all the counts are, are clickable. So you're saying, Oh, what is these 15 donors for this TP53 of the current mutation, uh, current searching criteria? You can click it. So when you click it, what it does, it stays on this advanced search page. It shows you which 15 that is. Basically, it keeps all the current searching criteria, but just add one more condition, that is the gene, what the gene you click on. <coughs> so it's a it's very, um, very powerful searching, searching tool. So finally, there's a donor I'm interested in. I can click on the donor uh, ID, and then I get to the donor page. So this one, again, summary, um, sections, available data, um, mutations for this donor. <coughs> so excuse me. Um, so uh, specimens for this, for this donor. And uh, you have, um, in this case, is um, there's a tumor, there's normal. For the tumor, we have um, the link to the external resource, shows the slides of the, um, of the tissue, um, pathology uh, uh, slides. 
that's another another tool. So again, uh, let me go back to the um, mutation, uh, 45 mutation for this donor, and click on that number. It give me back to the uh, to the to the advanced search page. So just whenever you see a number, you click that, you could get you to the advanced search page. And the advanced search page is always listing all the searching criteria currently that you have. You can you can reset them. You can you can share the link with them. Uh, I have not talked about that, but this share button really just saying, you know, uh, the, your searching criteria you can uh, with the URL. And, but you don't want to send the full URL here. You can shorten the URL. You can search, uh, share it very easily. In your in your study material, there are lots of shorting URL there, which means that you can click and you can share with your, your colleague. All your search criteria will be uh, all kept there. So um, so for this one particular donor, uh, now I have one more case demo that in this case is the um, the view data in external repository. So as uh, Francis mentioned that uh, data sent to us is analyzed data, but raw data is actually not hosted as ICCDCC, and this is this uh, external repository is, is, is meant. So for you we click on that, and then we see one particular uh, donor, and these are, the don these are the data available through other uh, repository. In this case, we have TCGA, clinical data, and we have CG Hub. Uh, with all different kinds of uh, uh, raw data. In this case, we are interested in micro RNA sequencing data, and the same idea here um, as before. We can we can filter that down by by click on the facet, and uh, now you have two left. There's two bands. So the way to un to download the data, you can download it. So um, the raw data download mechanism is different. You need to download the manifest first. And the manifest uh, contains information you needed in order to get the data, which is actually um, using other tool. Um, we need a client side tool, not the web interactive uh, download. So this is a tool that uh, we don't have the time to cover that, but this one carries the information you can send to another tool. Using the client side tool, you can download the, uh, the, the raw data. So that's uh, what I have for this for this part demo and. Uh, the three use cases I see if I have time to go through, but if not all of them, but uh, I can get through one or two. So find common mutation, mutated genes with high impact of ovarian cancer and prostate cancer. So these are the two. Um, um, so let's go to the advanced search page. So now we have, we have no condition applied. Uh, is, let's say ovarian cancer. So find ovarian cancer. And so those are 677 donors. And we want high impact mutation. Yeah, high impact mutation. So high. So now this is the, this is the donor. So we want to find uh, we want to find mutate, uh, mutated genes, right? Common genes. So these are the genes, two thousand four hundred genes, and then we save this gene set. This is another functionality. So these are genes from uh, ovarian cancer. Uh, I just use short name. Actually, I, I saved some uh, before uh, the demo. So all the cells are saved here. So I saved earlier. So I, did, I wouldn't have some difference here. So this is the name of this gene set here. So move on to the next one uh, that is prostate. So let's just pick up another gene list. So go to prostate cancer here. Same idea. We go high impact mutation. And then we we'll go to genes. Now this time we have 3,000 genes, and save this gene. So genes, so prostate cancer, save. So when you save, it actually goes to, so this page. Um, so so uh, basically we covered you know external browser of data. We covered all the major one. The one I'm focusing on now is this uh, analysis part. So as you can see that you know um, the the gene set I just saved are here these two. So the use case is that find the common genes about these two. So 
what are the common genes between these two sets we call sets, gene sets. So to do that, we have uh, right now we have three different analysis um, components. Uh, there's plans to add more. You can get some ideas how this works. So basically, uh, this one, this of each of the analysis takes one or more lists or sets, so which you built earlier somewhere else, uh, as I just did one, uh, two list sets. So our case is that we do set operation, meaning that we want to do the intersection. So now we, I choose to do set operation, and then I choose the two. I wanted to find out what a common gene set, and then I choose these two, and I say run. So as you can see that, you know, this one shows that um, a Venn diagram, uh, set one, set two, of Raven and Prostat. And uh, so this, this, this circle is the S1. Uh, that's the total 2,400. And then that's the total for the other one, 3,100. 3, and the common one is just this one, 852. So from there, you can save again. So basically, you pick up the pieces of your, of your interest, not only the common ones, you can say only exist in this side, not the other side, or only happen in one uh, particular uh, set, not in common. So it's free, it's up to you, how do you want to manipulate that? You can download a union of everything. So uh, it's quite flexible. So, and when you have three sets, it's become more, more fun as well. So in this case, we found, um, we want to have this 852, um, donors there. So once again, you can, once you have that, you can save again. So I can save, say, common genes, common genes, and this is ovarian and prostate. So I can save. So when I save, is actually go back to saved sets, uh, which, is, which is here. So that is the first demonstration. Uh, okay, it says save the set and share with a colleague. So how do I share? So to share that is just, um, okay, I just actually click on that already. So you click that, you can see that in the advanced page, you can see all these, all these things, what, what exactly it is 852. So then you can click on share and you get it the URL. And you send this URL to the colleague, and then you can paste on another browser, another, you know, in my case, I paste another tab, you'll see exactly the same gene, same gene list there. So that's the first use case. The second one, so um, a colleague shared with you an interesting mutation, and we're the same idea, and uh, give you a URL, and you're wondering, hmm, uh, what are the genes affected by this mutation? and whether there's any genes overrepresented in any pathways, and then how do I see the uh, enriched pathways. So you're gonna paste this URL, and then you'll get the, all, the, all the mutations, uh, 458 um, mutations, and then your question is about the um, genes, what are the genes affected by this mutation? In this case, it tells you right away there's 41. So now you want to see whether these genes are overrepresented in, uh, in pathways. You just launch here that announce enrichment analysis. So Irina, in the next section, will tell you more about uh, uh, how, does, how does this work? Uh, what does it mean, overrepresenting? So, um, so in this case, I will launch this, uh, this mutation, so I don't, I just choose, a, yeah, with some default settings, and then I just say, analyze that. So as you can see that, um, so these are mutation results. Uh, briefly, uh, again, uh, Arena will tell you more about these details, about these counts, what does it mean. So uh, we have 51 genes in the input, and uh, 21 of them has been annotated with, uh, with, uh, with reactant pathways. And the reactant pathway has totally um, 8,000 8, genes there. And, um, and the genes, um, the genes, uh, overall genes with the, um, uh, what is number? So overall there's a one, uh, 
1,000 gene sets in the in the universe. In this case, is uh, is um, bracton. So for each uh, enriched pathways, meaning that uh, it has more. Basically, the idea is that it has more. Um, so basically, you randomly pick up genes, and then just say if there's any bias to those to those genes. Um, in this case, we are expecting to see very low number of. Uh, uh, of genes from these pathways, but in fact we get uh, 18 of them. So basically, it's really un it's really unlikely by chance. So basically, we we perform uh, certain um, statistics and then give you the uh, adjusted p value. In this case, it's so low that it's almost zero. Um, so you have all the all the numbers, and then the the hit are uh, sorted by uh, uh, significant uh, p values. So um, you can you can open up uh, the reactor, open up this uh, uh, this this um, pathways in reactor browser view uh, to see where the so basically some of these pathways are high level pathways that's why you have these sub pathways inside um, some of them are, are individual pathways you can see so you can zoom in and see uh, so there's a um, these are proteins and these are protein complex, and uh, they highlight how many mutations, how many genes, how many mutations have in these genes. And um, yeah, you can browse through all this, this thing. And um, you can back to the enrichment uh, result as well now. So I don't think I have time for the third one. Uh, probably as a, as a one task, you can, you can do uh, when the lab session. Any questions?